Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wynn and welcome back to my Sid My Civilization 5 Zulu campaign as the Zulus. Uh, the leader called Shaka, in fact. One of the most well-known Zulus out there. Of course, if you haven't really paid much attention to the Zulus in, um, prior to this, you probably wouldn't have heard of him. Anyway, in between episodes I was taking a look at our situation and what, how it's best for us to act upon our current situation right now. Firstly, we have France over here. France is probably going to be our biggest threat or our first conquest. It might even be both, in fact. Um, over here we have the Iroquois. We managed to find found one of their cities. I'm not sure what city this is indeed. And why can't I... Hello, can I not move you guys? No. No way, I can... Okay, I'm trying to press the M key to move my person, but that's not apparently working. I can still move him by pressing the left mouse, sorry, the right mouse button down, but hey. Um, yes, there are a few things that I am interested in doing. Firstly, two of them actually revolve around city placement. Firstly, I could place a city right here on this hill tile. That'll give plus two food, give access to all of these um, flood, plan flood plain tiles, including this one up here. It also gives us access to this hill, so production will be fairly okay. Additionally, it also gives us iron and even more iron. This is eight iron all together right here. And if I build a mine here, that will also provide some extra production as well. I might be able to build Petra in this city. And if I manage to build Petra, that would be amazing. Simply because it turns all of the forest tiles into a plain style. Let's see. Yep, for instance, this one right here. One food and one production. So that would be a nice place to settle a city, especially if we can grab Petra. We could settle a city around here, simply to block off um, France from having direct access to our capital, by simply crossing the mountainous rivers over here, and just heading straight for Ulindi. I do want to expand Umgungundlovu all the way up to, not all the way around this area, because one, it'll prevent Lyon from expanding, two, it's great for cities anyway, and three, it'll give me access to this, well, it'll give me full control over this portion of the lake. Sorry, on this side of the river, should I say. Now, I am going to actually buy out this tile. Why am I going to do that? Oh my god, you should not do that. Take a look at how much money you'll be spending. You'll be spending over 50% of your money. Yes, I understand that. Um, unless there's anything I can buy right now that would be useful... Hmm, Scout, Warrior, Archer. I might just buy a, um, an Archer. Oh man, this is a tough choice. I want to buy this tile so that I can work on it as with a worker. But my workers are currently busy doing something. So I'll wait until I have a worker completely finished and move up to this tile. And then I'll start working on it. One, two, three. If this, if this city's borders expand out to this tile... Then I can have this dude improve that, and I can also work it with Umgungun, sorry, Umgungun Glovu. But for right now, we're just going to go and explore with our highly damaged scout. And let's take a look at the city-states around us. We have Mabanza Congo, we have Hanoi, and we have Lassar. Lassar is religious, so they'll give us piety. Piety? Sorry, they'll give us faith if we ally or um, befriend them. Hanoi and Mabonza Congo will provide us with unique units. Mabonza Congo, as we established in the last episode, give us access to the Conquistador, which would be useful for settling um, overseas on another continent. And they're also pretty powerful units in themselves. They don't have the penalty for attacking cities, like most other um, cavalry does. In fact, do they actually replace the cavalry? Let's see, they arrive in... where? It can't be. Oh no, it's in chivalry. They replace the knight, in fact. I was about to say, they can't replace the launcher in metallurgy. So that'll be useful. Unfortunately, we are on Pangaea, so there's not going to be too many... Sub there's not going to be much in the way of substantial land masses outside of our... Outside of our, you know, our... Pangaea. We also have Hanoi down here. Now, Hanoi... You will give us, ooh, the samurai, once we research steel. Let's actually take a quick look at the samurai. 
Wow. Um, okay, ignore that. Samurai. Samurai have 21 combat strength. They immediately gain shock and great generals. They require iron. And what else? Almost automatically receive shock. Wait, did I say shock and... What did I say? They have shock and great generals. Oh my god, my memory. <laughs> Success in combat with samurai has an increased chance of generating great generals. And they can build a fish boat without being consumed. That part is not so useful to me, but the useful instant shock one promotion will be beneficial to me. I'm not sure if the Ikanda actually upgrades, gives the promotions to melee units gifted by city-states, but I don't think they do, in fact, simply because of the wording of the Ikanda and the fact that it's a building that has to be built in each city. So we have discovered a barbarian encampment. There's one right here. Hmm. We'll leave that for now, in fact. Actually, no, I think we're going to want to go and deal with that. We have a unit promotion here. I want to send this guy down here to try and destroy this barbarian encampment here. Simply because that'll give us points with Hanoi. You know what, let's go and send him on his way. You should be fortifying until healed. And you guys are busy doing your thing. Two turns, three turns. Okay, as for you, let's go and see what this is. This is another Iroquois settlement called the Grand River. Now I am... La France offre cette proposition exceptionnelle. Hmm. So France is giving us... Well, wants to give us five gold per turn and an embassy. They want me to put an embassy in their capital, not the other way around. So I'm fine with that in exchange for silver. I am fine with that, in fact. Sure, go ahead. Um, I'm not sure if the Native Americans actually called the Grand River the Grand River. I'm pretty sure they probably called it something else. Obviously, they probably didn't call it its English name, because that would just be kind of weird, considering they're not English or originating from an English-speaking country. I believe all of the individual tribes actually had their own language. I believe that's how it goes. At any rate, there is another encamp... Oh, wait. We just pointed out that. <laughs> so we have found Genghis Khan the Great of Mongolia. I was not aware that this guy was present on this map. But because of that trade, we actually... The trade with France, we actually have income of four gold per turn. If we can maintain that income, we should be just grand. I do apologize for any background noise that you may or may not be hearing. If you are not hearing, then I don't apologize for it, but if you are hearing it, then I do apologize for it. Um, I have my window open because it is currently, well, very hot, as you'd expect in the middle of summer. We're going to send our Zulu warrior down. That'll take how many turns? Four more turns. Should be fine. And it seems like the Netherlands have entered the classical era. Now, we still have ten turns to go. I do want to try and purchase a library when we have the chance, simply to save the, simply to save the expense. I'm going to move this guy over here, and can we shoot? We can shoot this encampment, which is great. We'll do that. We'll have you guys fortify until healed. And these guys are still moving. That's good. You guys are done with that. So let's actually move you up to here to try and construct a plantation. I'm not sure if we'll manage to destroy the Barbarian encampment before our worker gets there, but hopefully we should be fine. If the Barbarian camp isn't done by the time our worker gets there, which should be in the next turn. And, you know what, this Barbarian camp won't be dead then. There's just no way it'll be dead in, well, one turn. Now this guy, what to do with this guy? I could send him down as well to go and clear out the encampment. But I much prefer the idea of actually keeping him in the main city, in my capital, to try and protect against anything that might be attacking us. For instance, barbarians or, you know, any hostility that might show their face. Now we do now have a pantheon. Now for the pantheon we have... how much viable choices do we have? We have religious idols, which would be a beneficial ability for us. 
We have plus one culture from jungle tiles, which could also be beneficial to us. If we go with that, that will apply to all these jungle tiles around here that will fall into our reach. One, two, three, one, two. Unfortunately, our capital doesn't really have access to too many jungle tiles. But it would be beneficial to gain plus one culture from jungle tiles. Especially because jungle tiles can provide so much yield. When you have two food just standard on jungle tile, you get the... I believe it is the university that also adds two science. You build a trading post on there which retains the food and the science and you also gain one gold which can then be further upgraded with later technologies to two and three gold. And then we can also gain one culture from them as well. That would be huge, especially when our city encompasses pretty much all of this. That would be amazing. In fact, that is probably going to be so amazing I am so tempted to pick it. But it will be a long term investment. If we want to go for something that will impact us right now, literally like right this instant, we'll, we could go with Religious Idols, which gets plus one culture and one faith for each gold and silver. Now we have a decent amount of gold and silver. We have gold here and we have silver here, not to forget that we actually placed our city on silver. So that will also be beneficial. Trade route. So it seems like France is actually sending a couple of trade routes my way. From, sorry, one trade route. From Orléon to Olindi. So they are trading between here and here. I don't really mind if that gets destroyed. Let's actually see. So I'm gaining one gold per turn from that, and I am also gaining two science. Um, religious idols or the sacred path? The sacred path would be so good later on in the game. It won't even be funny. In fact, it'll be absolutely funny. It'll be hilarious when I start ruffle stomping everyone. But I don't need sacred path for that. Man. I am. I have absolutely no idea. I mean, I have some idea. I'm just gonna go for release idols. Make it easier on us. You guys can yell at me all you like for the decisions that I have made and the stupid choices in life that I have made. If I have supposedly made any stupid mistakes, of which I am probably not going to tell you guys because that is somewhat personal information. I'm going to move you guys over to here and then construct a farm. Again, I apologize for the background noise. I probably should record at a later time. In fact. I'll just end my turn here. Now we have got a few things that we need to do with this worker. We need to have him go and collect this sugar tile. We need to have him connect up these tiles over here. There's an encampment. Oh man, there's an encampment right there. We could so deal with that right now. Yes, let's, let's go and deal with that. So you guys do that, and then can you guys defeat these spearmen this turn? You should be able to. Then we'll just send you in to go and destroy them. And, excellent. So we gained 25 gold, some experience. Okay, we don't actually gain experience, and we gained culture as well. Which is great. We are nearly there, actually, for our next social policy. You know, this whole honor thing going out and destroying barbarians, making me want to play as somebody who actually gets benefits from fighting against barbarians. For instance, there is Songhai, which is actually a very great civilization to play. I have played as it before, and it is extraordinarily fun. Um, there is also Germany, who has the chance of actually taking the barbarians from the encampment and having them join your side. Um, who else is there, in fact? I can't think of any off of the top of my head who would be beneficial. We're just going to go and send our scout out to explore even more. I really don't want these guys to settle another city, so... La France t'offre cette proposition exceptionnelle. Huh, okay. So, Lord Napoleon of France wants us to sign a declaration of friendship. Now, I don't trust this French bastard one whatsoever. Not that I'm being racist, I'm just trying to point out the fact that, okay, firstly, he is French, but secondly, unrelated to his ethnic origin, he is also kind of a bastard in this game. He likes to backstab people a lot, from my personal experience. Unfortunately, those people that he tends to backstab are mostly me. So I am going to actually say, yes, let us work together, because this guy is actually... If he, since we have a friendship, if he attacks me, he'll suffer a huge negative 
um, diplomatic modifier with everyone else in the game, all the other AIs. And that would make his situation much harder for him if he wishes to continue after he declared war on me. Otherwise, it prevents him from declaring war on me, which would be great. So we have vision now on that encampment down there, and we're just going to send our scout out to explore a little bit more. We already see the lands of Hiawatha, of France, and of the Netherlands down here. The Netherlands. Um, before you ask, no, I am not Dutch. I have a bunch of Dutch friends, but I myself am not from the glorious Netherlands region of um, northwestern, well, the northern part of Western Europe. So there we go, we now have a substantial amount of influence over Hanoi, we have 50, so this means that they'll occasionally give us a military unit. Right now, I suppose that military unit will be, oh we've even gained, um, opinion bonus from Lassar. Let's see, who else wants something? Mabanza Congo wants us to defeat barbarians that are invading the territory? I don't know if I can get there anytime soon. And as for these guys, ooh, these guys, I'll send you guys up here. We still have some income thanks to that trade that we have made with the French. And we're just going to continue to explore. Now what am I hoping to find out here? More civilizations. One thing I haven't mentioned is if, if a civilization has researched a technology that you have not, you actually gain a bonus modifier to that civ to that tech, it costs less. So there's another bandit camp over here. Band oh my god, they're not bandits, they're not brigands, they're barbarians. I have this conversation every day with one of my friends. Every time I call them a bandit, he goes barbarian. And if that doesn't work, then I go, I'll clear out this bandit camp. No, wait, b brigands. No, barbarians. Yeah, that's kind of how it works. Let's see, over here. Do I really want to spend 75 turns building a library? That is so bad. That is horrendous. Let's take a look. We could try and despecialize some of our people. That'll reduce it from 75 to 38. But, if we just buy out this tile, this, these borders aren't going to expand anytime soon towards this hill. So I'll just go and buy out the hill. That drops it to a much more manageable 25. It's still quite a lot of turns, but a little work. I want to go for a library. Let us go and send our archer over to here to try and deal with invading barbarians that might slip past our guard. And do we have masonry yet? We do have masonry, so we can now collect this material and add that to our resource list. And this material is actually really good. It's stone. And stone allows us to build a stonework. And a stonework is a very useful building that improves happiness and production. Also gives extra production to marble and stone resources in the city. So are we going to be able to defeat this guy this turn? No, we are not. So we're going to have him do that. We're going to send this dude over to here. And then this guy can try and move in. I'm going to lose that goal for a few turns. So Wittenberg we have met, they give us faith and extra gold. They also want us to destroy a barbarian encampment. Like immediately, like, oh hey Zulus, how are you doing? By the way, can you clear out this camp? What are you talking about? We just met, of course we just met, but this is really a pressing matter. There was, I didn't actually, I kind of intended there for there to be some sort of humor in that list, in that, like, thing that I just did, but, well, really. I'm not making anyone laugh, apart from people who laugh at misfortune. <laughs> uh, anyway, we can destroy this barbarian now. We should send this guy over to here and have him then work on the stone next turn. And even though our gold mine is pillaged, it doesn't... Okay, it means a lot to us, in fact, because we need that to give us some happiness. Right now we are sitting at zero happiness. Fortunately, our cities aren't going to grow anytime soon, which will add to our unhappiness. Actually, is Wittenberg trying to attack this barbarian encampment themselves? If that's so, I'll just wait until the barbarian is sufficiently damaged, and then move in and destroy it, and gain the 
gain the culture for killing it, gain Proud the experience. The of Zeus fostered kings. Their honor comes from Zeus, and Zeus, god of counsel, loves them. Okay, so a bunch of things happened this turn. Let's do it from the least important to the most important. Firstly, we have a barbarian encampment down here, right next to Hanoi. We can actually go and clear that out, but Hanoi isn't hasn't got a quest to get rid of that just yet. Let's see, in Ulundi, I want to actually go for a settler. So let's go for a settler. After that, hmm, I want to make a caravan just in case France does attack me, then I'll have a trade route. I'll have extra income, because right now I'm getting my income from France. I'm kind of relying on them, which is bad, because they are our enemy. Um, yes, we had a production available in our capital. We completed the Statue of Zeus. This is going to be amazing for when we start doing our thing with opposing cities. It gives us extra combat strength when attacking cities, and oh my god, the noise from outside. Okay. Um, let's go for... Should we... Yeah, we have to go for this. But the question now is, what social policy should we go down? Now, piety. How would piety help us? I, well, piety will help us enhance our religion, but I only really want my religion for one thing and one thing only. And that is for the ability to purchase pre-industrial units with faith. We could go for military caste. Increases local happiness by one and culture by two when a unit is garrisoned. We could go for that. Let's have you heal. That'll also give us access to professional army, which reduces the cost of upgrading a unit by 33% and increases the construction of barracks, armories, and military academies. Or we can go for military tradi tradition. Alternatively, we can go either tradition or liberty. Hmm, what would be useful? Liberty would be great for us, because then we can connect up our conquest by roads, and that will give us extra happiness. Whereas tradition will give us food growth, give us free buildings, and extra production with wonders. It will also give us extra happiness. A lot of extra happiness, in fact. Hmm. Let's see, liberty unlocks the pyramids, tradition unlocks the hanging gardens. I don't think we're going to get any of those. We are definitely not going to get either of those. Natural wonder, not natural wonders, world wonders. So, if we adopt this, that will give us extra culture in each city. But if we adopt tradition, we'll gain even more culture per turn. But we don't really rely on culture per turn too much. We rely on killing barbarians in order to get our culture. You know what, let's go for... Hmm, I want to get military cast, but I want to unlock liberty. Let's... No, let's go for military cast. Eventually, after this, we'll be able to gain gold if we fill out honor by killing enemy units. So that'll be beneficial. Now, since we have military cast, we can send this dude into here and increase our happiness. Now, you guys just sit and wait, and you guys start constructing a quarry. As for you guys, go and take a look at what's going on over here and fortify until healed. And we are done for this turn. In fact, the episode is actually getting a little bit long. There's marble down here and a French scout. I really hope that Wittenberg starts to attack these guys. Oh, they are in fact attacking. And we can kill them next turn. Let's see, the scholars of Hanoi seek the wisdom of a great admiral. Oh god, another great admiral, really? So we're going to send our scout in to clear out this encampment. This will give us... This will gain us a... Dude, let's see. Oh, okay. The worker must have been from this city-state, who is someone who we can't see. If I returned this unit, if I discovered this city-state, and then I could return this unit, and it'll give me extra influence with this city-state over here. But that's not actually going to happen because we haven't discovered these guys, therefore we don't know that this worker was actually stolen by the Barbies. And let's just end the turn there. How are things going? The French caravan is okay. Let's take one final look at the soldiers list. Hmm. 
The average is 24,000, we're at 16, nearly 17,000. Hopefully our allied city-state will want to give us some more units anytime soon. Because that would be great. We also have Lestar over here, you are giving me extra faith per turn. Okay. Okay. Okay, that will be it for this episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I do apologize for any background, um, well, background noises that you would have been able to hear from outside where I live. I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care.